Okay. But Shishendu, your voice is not actually uh, clear when you spoke. Is not clear. Just one second. Yes. And now it is fine. Now it is fine. But That's before fine. it was breaking a bit. But now it is fine. So you met. Uh, we, we met at ESP. Yes. At uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. You were given that uh, that M two courses in that time. Yes. Uh, in uh, 2010, and I think in after that, in the 2013 or 14, uh, in uh, Toulouse, when I was postdoc, ah yes, uh, came for some conference in that time. Yes, yes, I was there. For some, I go often to Toulouse because uh, there is Jean Pierre Raymond, Sylvain yes. Hervé Doza, but he moved to Bordeaux. Uh, do, do you? Sylvain went to work with him. You, you work with Sylvain yes. or? Yes, I work with Sylvain and Raymond both. Okay. Okay. Sylvain is in Bordeaux now, right? Yes, now he is in Bordeaux. Yes, yes, he recently got uh, the promotion to be. He is now the director of CNRS. It's a very nice position. There is no teaching. Ah, yes. So you you are teaching any course in this time period? Uh, no, now I just retired, so I, I don't give any course. And you, how many hours do you teach for uh, a year? For usually for a week, four, four hours in oh, general, yes. for one course. Yeah. yeah. So that is for one course. So you, and, uh, well, yes. It's the evolution of the level of the student. You, you, you are happy with, with the evolution or? No, evolution is uh, because the response is from the all kind of students is not uh, clear. And their performance is also is not clear actually. There are certain people who are doing well, but we don't know because and we try different things. So in intermediate test, we took sometimes intermediate step or assignments. We didn't put the submission in inside the class. Also, we asked some questions, but yes. it's a problem actually. Yes. So in, in France, how the uh, condition of equal? Uh, uh, the students, in fact, they are, they are good uh, when you are at uh, Master 2, Master 2, but before, uh, in the university at least, they are not so good. Uh, uh, and the evolution is uh, it's, uh, decreasing a little bit, the level of the students in maths, but it's still reasonable. Yeah. So when you were in France, did you teach? Uh, no. no, no. I was as a if camp postdoc. I was in uh, Toulouse. Yeah, but sometimes postdoc can teach if they want yeah. to. <laughs> and I think you came to TFR, right? Long back, certain yes. time. Yes, I, I went for for one month. Yes, uh, that was is a new the new building. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And. Uh, what happened to the old building? Uh, it's still used, the, old, the older building? That no. one is inside ISC. So I think now that that building is not used by TFR. OK. So There's a new building, whatever is there. Yeah. We're using that one. And now there is a new airport, yes? There is a huge airport. But probably it's not working so much <laughs> now. So you you give some online courses or sometimes now or yes uh, yes I, I was uh, yes I, I gave some uh, but now I am uh, I, I just retired so that I don't teach anymore. But uh, last year, well, last year in March, April, May, and June, I, I there was some. Uh, because of the COVID, we, it was online, yes. But the student was working very well. I think that it was not really uh, a problem. I was, uh, it was a good surprise for me because the, they were serious. They, they were coming to the courses. They, do, they were doing the exercise. And you, you, you have a good contact with the student. With uh, is it a 
it a problem is the fact that you cannot speak in front of them or is it okay little bit problem because the but the because we i cannot see all of them every time simultaneously because in my course have uh, 50 students are there ah, yes. Yes. so yes, i am not right. going to understand that everybody is simultaneously understanding those things or not try to interact but uh, so i used to use now not only this uh, sometimes uh, that this in whatsapp group also i try to send some material so that i should get some feedback because they are uh, not clear that everybody understood correctly or and so i will ask some questions so that they they should be active on that okay okay very good i think okay. we should, is it time to to start yes or do we a little bit how is it i think it's okay so can start we start now yes okay so then we will start So, so maybe I, I share the screen now or can yeah, as you wish you can do it now okay maybe i do it now just to be sure okay so i'll start yes on on behalf of the organizers a very warm welcome to professor john michel kuron and all the participants of the webinar on pd and related areas for the participants we request you to keep your questions stored in the question answer box we are honored to have professor john michel kuron with us today professor kuron obtained a doctorate under the guidance of him bridges at the université paris 6 paris france in 1982 until the 90s he has worked on partial differential equations arising in differential geometry in fact relic conjecture imave prototype problems harmonic maps and the physics of liquid crystals he has obtained outstanding results in the field of nonlinear functional analysis since 1992 his research area is the control theory of partial differential equations and which includes both controllability and stabilizations his significant control results concern partial differential equations related to fluid dynamics that is related to euler and navier stokes equations for incompressible fluid shallow water equations kdv equation for example with emphasis on nonlinear phenomena his results have important application to the control of navigable rivers and irrigation channels he was the director of center for mathematical studies and their applications cmla france in 1995 and 1996 from 2003 up to 2012 he was a senior member of the institute universite de france he is a professor at the jacques louis lyon laboratory pierre and marie curie university in paris 6 since 2008 and a member of french academy of sciences he has been awarded numerous prizes like the pharma prize in 1993 jeffe prize in 1995 by the academy des sciences and Dargelos Prize in 2002, Siam Outstanding Paper Prize in 2006, ICA Maxwell Prize in 2015, WT Italia Reed Prize in 2017. He was an invited speaker at the International Congress of Mathematicians (ICM) Kyoto, Japan in 1990 in the section of partial differential equations. He was a plenary speaker at the 2010 International Congress of Mathematicians (ICM) Hyderabad, India. and international congress on industrial and applied mathematics icaam 2015 in beijing china i suggest students and young researcher to have a look at his excellent book control and nonlinearity from the american mathematical society and the research materials provided on his web page today he will be speaking on stabilization in finite time of some partial differential equations I hope you will enjoy the talk thoroughly, Professor John Michel Kuron. It's over to you now. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, very nice uh, uh, presentation, Professor Chaudhary. It's a great pleasure for me to to give this uh, talk, and so I want to thank the organizer. Uh, 
So the talk will be on stabilization in finite time of some partial differential equation. And the outline of the talk is, uh, sorry, the outline of the talk is here. So we'll start with some motivation. Then I will present some results in finite dimension. And then we are going to move to some partial differential equations. There will be the heat equation, KDV equation, and finally hyperbolic systems. For the motivation. So the problem of stabilization is very important for many applications. Let me give you a very simple and classical example. You have a cart which is moving on a line and above the cart there is a, a rod with a mass at the end and this rod is moving around the center of rotation C. So this equilibrium is unstable because as the rod is moving to fall down, it's going to fall down on the right or it is going to fall down on the left. So you have an equilibrium which is unstable and you want to stabilize it by using a feedback, a feedback law. So you need to have some control and the control is a force that you apply to the cart. So you choose a, a, a force that depends on what you see and you try to get an equilibrium which is now stable, asymptotically stable. So you move from unstable to asymptotically stable. Let, give, let me show you some experiments. So this is a double inverted pendulum. You see on the slide that there is this first rod, rod and the second one. And now there is two center of rotation, the one which is below and one which is, and there is some zoom, one which is between the two rods. So this equilibrium is very unstable, but still it's going to, to work, you see the thanks to a feedback to succeed to stabilize the equilibrium which is unstable without the feedback loop. You see this is quite uh, impressive and this we cannot do it. The machine succeeds to do it but what we can do is what is doing uh, James Stewart in the movie Vertigo. He, al he has a walk stick on the top of his finger so this equil equilibrium is unstable and he moves uh, the finger depending on what he see and he succeeds to stabilize the point which is unstable without the feedback law. See? So this is a classical experiment. Yes, which we can do with a broomstick usually. And now I want to, to show you a last example showing the interest of uh, rapid stabilization, which is uh, the main topic of the talk. So the, the picture is divided in two parts. So this is, a, there are, this is in a river, there are two gates uh, and in front of the gates are, are fixed, they are not moving. And the, the water is moving below the gates. And on the back, we implement a feedback and the, the gates are moving on the back. And I want to show you that with the motion of the the gates which are well chosen, that is with a good feedback, then you get a better convergence, a quicker convergence, which is of course very important for application. So let me show you this. So you see the equilibrium now is already stable, but on the back, the convergence is much quicker than in front of. So this is a problem of rapid stabilization. You, you want not only to have a point which is asymptotically stable, you want to have a rather quick convergence in some sense that you have to, to precise. Let's give some example in finite dimension. So there will be the stabilizability problem and then there will be some uh, result about uh, uh, stabilization in finite time. So we have the control system, which is modeled by the equation y dot, this is dy over dt, is equal to f of y and u. y is called the state, for example, in the case of the cart inverted pendulum, the, the, the y is of dimension four, because there is the position of the cart, the velocity of the cart, the angle of the rod with the vertical, and the angular velocity. So we have a n, which is equal to four, and u is of size one. It's the force that you apply to the cart. So you have typically y dot is equal to f of y and u. And after some, uh, maybe some transformation, you may assume that f of zero, zero is equal to zero. And we are looking for a feedback law 
which is a map U going from Rn with value into Rm, M is the size of the control, which vanishes at zero, which is continuous, such that the origin is now asymptotically stable for what is called the closed loop system. The closed loop system is y dot is equal to f of y, u of y. And maybe for some people who are not very familiar with dynamical system, I'm going to recall what is the definition of asymptotically stable, which is due to Lyapunov in his thesis. It means two properties, stable and attractor. So stable means that uh, you have this equilibrium and you require that whatever is the red ball, there is a smaller ball, the blue one, such that if you start in the smaller ball, then you remain always in the future in the red ball. And you see, since the feedback is only continuous, you may have many, the, you do not have the uniqueness of the solution to the Cauchy problem. This is why I present two trajectories starting from the same point. One is the green one and the other one is the black one. So this is this property of stability. And the second property is the property of attractor. You require that if you start close enough to the equilibrium and you follow the, the flow, then you converge to the equilibrium. And this is these two properties together, which, are the which is, gives the definition of asymptotically stable. So, we, we use a feedback which is only continuous, and I want to show you why it's important to, to consider feedback which are not necessarily very smooth. So I show you this on a very simple example. The size of the, the dimension of the state is two. You have y1 and y2. The dimension of the control is just one, and the dynamics is given by one. y1 dot is equal to y1 minus y2 cube, and y2 dot is equal to u. If you do the linearization of this control system, that is, you forget the, the cubic term, you get that this linearized system is not controllable, which means that you cannot move from one point to another. There are some cases where it's not possible. But the nonlinear system is locally controllable if you have in small time and with small control. If you have two points which are close to the origin, it's possible to move, to move from the first point to the second point by choosing a control which is small, and you can make it in small time. So this system is small time locally controllable. Now you want to try to stabilize it by a feedback loop. So you want to propose a map U depending on Y1 and Y2. You want to find U of Y1 and Y2. And if you consider U of Y1, Y2, which is smooth, then you can consider the linearized system of the closed loop system. You, you have a the closed loop system takes the form y dot is equal to f of x and y, where x is given by one. You compute x prime of zero, and you see whatever is uh, k1 and k2, there will be always an eigenvalue of x prime of zero, which will have a strictly real part. So the point is unstable. But you can stabilize it with a feedback, which is only continuous. This is due to Dayawanza and Martin. So you want to relax the, the properties that the feedback is smooth. So, but if you do that, you can make a stabilization in finite time. That is, instead of having the convergence, if you start close enough to the origin, you have the convergence to the origin, you can require that you have a convergence in finite time. Let me show you that on this, on the C plus example. Y dot is equal to U. So the state is y of dimension one, u is a control, is of dimension one also. And you consider the feedback, which is defined on the slide, u of y equal minus three divided by two, absolute value of y to the power of one third, multiplied by the sine of y. You can compute the solution of the closed loop system, and you see, this is given by equation three, that y of t is zero if the time is larger than absolute value of y zero to the power of two third, which means that the convergence to zero is in finite time. In finite time, y is equal to zero. So now you could look, you could say, okay, now instead of having asymptotic stability, I want the point to be stable and the convergence to be in finite time. So this is the definition of finite time stable. You have this uh, vector field, which is only continuous. You have an equilibrium. This is a zero of x. 
and you say that the point y e is finite time stable. If it is stable, this is the same definition as before. And now for the application, for the definition of, for instead of attractor, you require, which is a convergence, you require that in finite time, y of t is equal to zero if the time is large enough. This is a property one. And if you have a, a control system, y dot is equal to f of y and u, you can ask, okay, can I find a u of y, which is only continuous, such that for the closed loop system, I have this stabilization in finite time. So the problem is, can you find this u? So we start with uh, the simplest system, which has a linear system in finite dimension, y dot is equal to a y plus b u. And then you have this theorem that it's possible to stabilize it thanks to a feedback, which is a Holderian, if and only if this system is controllable, which means that you can move from any point to any other point with a suitable control. And in fact, we know that the controllability, this is the Kalman wrong condition, is equivalent to the property two. And essentially, the, the talk is about what we can do in for the PDE case. I would like to give you uh, some indication uh, on the proof of uh, this result uh, about that if you have a system which is linear and controllable, you can stabilize it in finite time. So I consider one of the simplest cases, which is y1 dot is equal to y2, y2 dot is equal to u. It satisfies the kalman rang condition, so it's controllable. And so you can stabilize it in finite time. And I want to construct a u explicit, which gives you the stabilization in finite time. And Nirenberg, uh, who is a very great mathematician, uh, gave a very good uh, uh, advice when you have no more ideas for solve a problem, I was told was that one of his famous advices was, have you tried the dimension two? So we are already in dimension two, we, we move one step further and we consider the dimension one. So we consider this system that we already saw before, y1 dot is equal to y2, where the control is y2 and the state is y1. And we already see that it was possible to stabilize the system in finite time. Just by considering this feedback, which is defined by S3, we show that at least we, we, we show it for alpha equal one third, but it's okay for any alpha which is less than one, you get stabilization in finite time. Of course, the system two is, sounds to be different from the system one, but there is a method that we are going to use later on. This is why I, I want to recall it, to move from the system two to the system one, which is called the backstepping. You consider the control system one, y1 dot is equal to f of y1, y2, y2 dot is equal to two, is equal to y2. The, the state is y1, y2, and the control is u2. And you want to reduce the dimension. So we consider instead of the control system one, you consider the control system, which is given by two, where the state is y1 and the control is y2. So you see, you reduce the dimension of the state. The dimension of the state before for system one was n1 plus n2. Now this is just n1. The size of the control is the same, it's n2. And then we, we, we assume that we can stabilize this system two with a feedback law, which is called y2 bar. And then we, we are going to show you how we can stabilize the system one. You consider this Lyapunov function since uh, if you use the, the feedback y2 bar, this is asymptotically stable, then you, you, there is a Lyapunov function, which is called L, L of y1. And then we consider this new Lyapunov function, which is called three, which is defined by three. And we try to make it decrease by choosing the, the control in a proper way. So you compute V dot, you arrive to the equation which is given uh, on the slide and you define new by the formula, which is given on the slide. And you get that V dot is strictly negative. So you see, you reduce with this method, you can reduce the dimension of uh, this control system, study a simpler system, and then go back to the original system. So if you try to do that for our system, then it's not really working so well, because if you use the feedback, because you see, maybe I should mention that, in the expression of, um, 
in the expression of u, we use y2 bar prime. So you need to compute the derivative. But in our example, y2 bar is not differentiable at the origin. So there is a problem. If you compute, if you do the same, same type of computation, then you define this v by one, and then it's not working because v is not of class c1. You cannot compute the derivative. But the idea is to try, you see, the, the point for v is to penalize the fact that y2 is not equal to minus y1 to the power alpha. But there are some other way to penalize the fact that y2 is not equal to minus y1 to the power alpha. It's given by three, you see? You have this formula and where phi is given by two and you see by the definition of, of, um, of phi that if you have v is equal to zero, then y2 has to be equal to minus y1 to the power alpha. So you penalize with this Yapuna function, the fact that y2 is not equal to minus y1 to the power alpha. So you compute v dot and now it's working perfectly well. You define u by the formula three and then you get that v dot is less or equal than minus delta to the power v to the power v to the power two times alpha divided by one plus alpha. And then in order to have stabilization in finite time, it is sufficient to take alpha in one over two, one. And then you can keep going. So, so this is the solution for this simpler system. But we know this is a classical result uh, for uh, finite dimensional control system linear, which are linear. Then they are all equivalent to the system one. And then you can use the same method by iterative in some iterative way. And you get the stabilization in finite time of any linear control system which is controllable. Now we, so this is for finite dimensional control system. And now we move to the case of PD. And our first PD will be linearity equation, the C plus one, it will be 1D. So we have this uh, control system, yt minus yx, x is equal to zero. yt zero, x is between zero and one. yt zero is equal to zero. And yt one is the control, it's u of t. And you want to stabilize this system in two ways. The first one is rapid exponential stabilization. And the second one is finite time stabilization. Let's try to make, to do that. The first result is about uh, uh, exponential stabilization with a decay rate, which is as large as we want. So you fix any lambda which is positive, then you can construct a feedback law, u lambda, such that for the closed loop system, which is the system two, then you have the estimate three, which show you that uh, you have an exponential decay rate, which is at least equal to lambda. This is an old result, which is due to Russell. Uh, which is a consequence, in fact, of uh, the pole shifting terrain due to Russell, which is a much more complicated result than the one which is given in this theorem. But I want to show you uh, another method, which is due to Boscovich, Christic, and you. It relies on backstepping. So as we mentioned before, backstepping is a method to stabilize uh, a, sy a system if you are able to stabilize a simpler system. So it has been used also for PDE, and I can, uh, you can find more results on, on this uh, book, uh, which is freely available on, on my web page. But in uh, 2003, uh, Boscovich and Balog and Christic, and then other collaborators of uh, Christic, uh, use a discretization of the partial differential equation, of the heat equation, they use the method in finite dimension. And the, fi the method in finite dimension, I did not explain it is that way because in the case of finite dimensional, uh, of finite stabilization, it's not working that way. But in fact, it's equivalent to trying to, to transfer, to, to transform the, the first system, which has a very special structure, which is triangular, into a simpler system. And this is what we are going to do for the PD. And if you try to understand what happened at the limit, you do the discretization, you have something in finite dimension, you apply the method of backstepping method in finite dimension, and then you let the mesh goes to zero. Then it's equivalent to transform the first system into a second one, which is simple to stabilize. 
by a Volterra transformation of the second kind. This is what I am going to show you now. So this is the first system is equation one. And we want to map this system to transform this system into the system two. And for the system two, you see it's very simple. If you want to have a degree H which is equal to lambda, there is no problem. You just put V, the control equal to zero. You multiply the equation two by Z, you integrate by part, do some computation, and you arrive to the property which gives you the exponential degree H, which is three. So the point is to try to transform the system one into the system two by a linear transformation, which is the Volterra transformation of the second kind. The Volterra transformation of the second kind, it takes the form one, given by one, where K is called the kernel. And Volterra transformations are very interesting because they are invertible. And the, invert, the inverse of this uh, Volterra transformation of the second kind is again a Volterra transformation of the second kind. So you want to transform you, you, you want to find K, in fact, now the unknown is K, such that the original system, the Y system, is transformed into the Z system. And then you have some PDE, so you, and for the feedback law, you, you see it's given by equation one, Y of T1, it depends on K. But for the PDE, you just get uh, this uh, equation. So you have a wave equation, K11 is you take two times the derivative of K with respect to X1. K22, you take two times the derivative of K with respect to X2. So this is an equation on a triangle. You have some boundary condition on the boundary of this triangle. So it's a very natural equation, a very well-known equation. It's a wave equation, very classical. But the boundary condition is not so, so usual. And also, the, the domain is a triangle. And in order to, to show that there is a K, which so this is the only problem which remains to be, to be solved, found the K, they perform a change of variable, which is given on the slide. They arrive to the equation one, which is equivalent to the equation on K. They integrate two times, uh, you see, they integrate two times with respect to S and T, the first equation. They use the boundary condition and they get that it's equivalent uh, to this property one. And then you see, you want to show that uh, you have a fixed point of some map. So you do some iteration. You define GN plus one in terms of GN as, as uh, defined by three. You can compute, in fact, explicitly the GN. It's rather complicated, but you get some formula. And at the end, you get the formula three, which gives you the explicit value of K. There is only one solution. And this solution is given by three where I is a Bessel function. Uh, yes, I see that there is some questions. So sh should I uh, try to answer to the question? Uh, no, okay. I move on. You have to put your micro on. Uh, we can take the first question. I think it is written that yes. In infinite dimensional case, does null controllability imply finite time stabilization? Yes, uh, it implies for linear system. For non-linear system, this is a very good question. For non-linear system, it's known to be false uh, because there are many controllable systems that you cannot stabilize by a U of X. But what I, I show in 1992, is that it's possible to stabilize it by a feedback which depends on time. And you can also make it in a finite time. So roughly speaking, many controllable system can be, most of the controllable system can be stabilized in finite time by a feedback which depends on time. It's known that we cannot do it with a feedback which does not depend on time. And this is a very good question because, in fact, later on for the PD, we are going to use feedback which depends on time. So feedback depends on time, which means this is U of T and X, but the definition of uh, asymptotic stability is roughly speaking the same, the same, except that you have to be careful that you want to have something uniform with respect to time. So this is a, a very good point. Is there some other question or it's okay? Uh, there are some other questions, but still, I just want to clarify in regarding that question. So yes. when you have a linear system, 
so in that time if you put the control is zero after time t onwards the solution will be zero right yes yes but you don't want to do that because it's like for the for the boom six of the top of your finger you could say okay i stabilize it in finite time so in finite time i arrive at the verticals and i don't move anymore yes of course in practice it's not going to work because there is some mistake about the model and so on so you are not going to arrive exactly at the vertical with zero speed so it means that you have to to keep going you have to still use the u i i mean that you could say in fact this is what was uh, the refer to my to my paper was telling me that you could say okay when i arrive at zero i take u equals zero yeah but in practice you have to keep going to apply u of x because you do not arrive exactly at zero so you have to use this u of x uh, you have to keep going with the u of x of course you could say doesn't matter too much because when i arrive at zero then the u uh, u of zero is equal to zero so if i stay at zero i just have the control which is equal to zero but in practice you have to always apply the feedback it's always u of x it's not uh, you you cannot say okay i am at zero i I stay with u equal to zero. It's not possible because. But null control when you when you assume null yes. when you assume the null controllability, that means you arrive at zero, right? Yes, yes. Null, null controllability means that you what uh, if you have a if it is local, let's say let's assume this is local uh, local null controllability. It tells you that if you are close enough to zero. You can find the control depending on the initial data, which allows you to arrive at zero. But you see, there is a big difference between uh, uh, what is called now this is open loop, that is, the, the control depends on the initial data, and feedback loop, the control does not depend on the initial data. And if you took a, a control which depends on the initial data, you have a problem of robustness because there will be. The, there is some errors and you can you cannot correct the error with the control which depends on the initial data there is a big difference this is a very good question again because there is a big difference between controllability which tells you that there is a, a control which will use you to move from one point to the other point but the control depends on the two points depends on time and on, on the two points and the problem of stabilization where the control does not depend on the initial data on the initial data, it depends only on on the state x or y, if you call it one. Uh, it could depend on time also, but does not depend on the initial data. So the control does not depend on the initial data. This is a key point. So that means in zero t, if you get a feed a null controllability with a feedback control, in that case, you can say about finite time stabilization. Uh, there is two points, of course. Uh, if you have finite time stabilization, you get the null controllability. Yes, that is obvious. But the converse, what is complicated is the converse. The yes. converse is not always true first. It's roughly speaking true if you have the U, if you have a, if you allow the control to depend on time. But if you do not allow the, the control to depend on time, there are many counterexamples. But this is a very good point. Uh, Controllability means that the, the control depends on the initial data. If you want, let's assume you want to arrive to zero. Controllability means that, that you, you, you start with a point, you let's call it A, and you construct a control which depends on time and on A, which allows you to arrive to zero. But for the feedback, the control does not depend on the initial data. It depends on the, the state at time t. Okay. okay. So, so uh, just, just in that highlight, that means if in zero to t, if you get null controllability with a feedback control, in that uh, case, can you say finite time stabilization? Uh, uh, sorry, can you repeat again? Yeah. Uh, I am asking that, suppose you have null controllability in the time interval zero t with a feedback control. Uh, it's. It's it's a uh, yes. This is what I prove in uh, 
95, but this is rather complicated. So you can make it, but it's not so obvious because uh, there is a big difference between controllability and stabilization. Controllability, you allow the control to depend on the initial data, but for stabilization, you do not allow the control to depend on the initial data. Okay. Okay. So, so there are other questions, but I will take at the end, I think. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Let's move. Let's try to move on. So, uh, and now, and this is related to your question, in fact, because of course, um, uh, this method is also a way to prove the null controllability. Because you see, you, you can prove some estimate on K. You have this estimate on K, and the point is that you have a square root of lambda at the exponential. You do not have lambda. If you have lambda, what I'm going to explain you is not working. So you have this estimate on K, that you can show just by looking at some uh, books because the k is explicit. And then you, you have the estimate on the also the, the inverse map. And then the idea is to, to divide the interval of time, uh, uh, let's say zero t, with some tn, tn is defined on the slide. So during the interval of tn, tn plus one, you transform, you use Kn, Kn correspond to lambda n, and lambda n is n to the power eight. And then with that, uh, you, you succeed to, to prove that you arrive at zero. So this is a way also to prove the null controllability. The null controllability is an old result due to uh, Fattorini and Russell, and it's known also to work in, in higher dimension. But the proof is not so obvious. And here you have something which is rather elementary, which allows you to move to show that you can always, starting from any initial data, you can always find a control which allows you to write to zero in time t. So this is a, a way also to, to recover the, the null controllability. And we, with uh, Nguyen, we, we study the case where the coefficients could depend on x, and this is equation three, and the target system, the system in which we want to transform the first system into the second one, is the system four. You succeed to, we prove that the existence of k, and we get uh, some estimate on k, which allows you to recover again that you have the, the, the null controllability with this type of estimate. So the proof is uh, related to, to some energy type estimate, but it's not the classical one. The classical one is just multiplied by k, uh, by k, kt, k1, in fact, and then you do some integration by part. It's a little more complicated. And now I'm going to show you how you can get the small time stabilization. You could say, okay, I use this, this, you remember the construction that I gave here? It looks like a feedback loop. It's, it's a feedback which depends on time, in fact. You, give, you get a feedback which depends on time. But with this type of feedback, you do not get the stability. You get that if you start at zero, you arrive at zero in finite time, but you do not get the stability. And so you have to change a little bit the construction. So first, and this is very interesting for many cases, that is the fact that when you have a closed loop system, the, the equations are not very well studied because you, you have this feedback, which is now a new problem. So you have to study the, the Cauchy problem with the feedback. So we assume that you have the issue, there is some property on, on you, u of t and y. There is this uh, periodicity, there is also this tn, this sequence tn as before and you have this uh, Lipschitz condition, but m of t can go to plus infinity as t is going to capital T. So when you have this, you can prove that the feedback, with, with the feedback law, you have a closed loop system, which is well posed, but it's well posed only, of course, to time capital T. In order to have the well posed net through the time capital T, you impose a new condition, which is given by P4, which is not satisfied by the feedback which is constructed before. And then with this, with uh, this new property, you can get that you have the well-posed problem for any time. And you can get also the stabilization 
infinite time. There is a time varying feedback flow, which is related to the construction that I gave before, which allows you to get the stabilization in finite time for the heat equation. But there is a very challenging open problem. You see the feedback that I construct depends on time. But we saw that for finite dimensional constraint system, which are linear, if they are controllable, you can always stabilize it with a feedback which does not depend on time. So it's very natural to ask what is really the situation for the heat equation? Is it possible to get the stabilization in finite time by a feedback which does not depend on time? Because the feedback that we present before, for which we and we get the finite time stabilization with this feedback depends on time, but we would like to have something which does not depend on time. And this is a very challenging open problem. Now we, <coughs> we try to, <coughs> to do the same for other partial differential equation. And I am going to move to the Corvex de Vries equation. So this uh, KDV equation is used to, to model the, the evolution of the heat of the water in channels. It's given by uh, equation one when we do some uh, change of variable. So all the physical constant are equal to, to one. And we have some boundary condition. I don't know, maybe, maybe we, since I start a new session, a new section, maybe if there are some questions I, I can answer now. Or... Yeah. yeah, there are other questions regarding backstripping. So will you take now? So. I can read that. Yes. Then exactly. that um, is there any analog of backstepping integral transform in higher dimension? Ah, this is a very good question. You no, know, I try a lot to do this uh, method of backstepping in higher dimension, and uh, we do not succeed really. Yeah. No, but this is very, this is a very good question. Yes. So then you have a. If you try to make it for the heat equation again, yt minus Laplacian y equals zero. So you have the kernel equation and you have um, as, uh, some kind of uh, wave equation in some general sense of the, for the kernel, but we are not able to prove the existence of a solution. It's quite possible it exists, but uh, we didn't succeed. That's very good, very good, uh, very good open problem, yes. Another is, can the backstripping method be applicable in the case of interior control? Uh, uh, um, yes, uh, yes. Um, but then the, uh, I'm going to, to explain that in, in fact for the KDV control system, you have to consider more general transformations than Volterra transformation of the second guy. This is related to, to this new section, in fact. So that means it is applicable in the case of interior control. That's yes, it's it's applicable, except it's not really, it's not a Volterra transformation of the second kind. It's something which is more complicated. It's a linear transformation, but not a Volterra transformation of the second kind. That is, if you consider yt minus yxx, let's say, is equal to u of t phi of x, where the function which is given and the control is u of t, then first, it's not always null controllable, but you can give the condition in order to get null controllability. And if this condition is satisfied, then you can show that you can get rapid stabilization by this backstepping method, except it's not really backstepping because backstepping is related to this triangular, to triangular form. Uh, it's more what is called uh, equivalence of systems, equivalence of system. But I, I, I will show you this on the KDV equation, in fact. Okay. So and the last one is there for approximate controllable system. How much can we say about finite time stabilization? Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, I think, yes, I think this is, uh, you see with this method, usually you can prove that you can arrive to zero. So the, it's a method to show the null controllability. So null controllability is not really approximate controllability. So I think that you, uh, um, no, that's, that's quite possible that it's working, but the estimate on the kernel will not be the same if the system is not null controllable. You can probably, 
prove that the K exists because the K, yes, it's related to what I'm going to show you now. The existence of K is more related to approximate controllability. It's not related to null controllability. So probably the K exists for many approximate, when you have approximate controllability, at least if the, the size of the domain is uh, one. But the estimate on K will not be as, uh, as good as the one I present before. Okay. So okay, I think uh, there is no other question in between. Very good. Very good. So we, we move on. Okay, uh, now I, I've done the 45 minutes, but since there were questions, I think I no can no keep problem. going. Yes. Okay, thank you. So we are now going to, to study this. Um, it sounds to be a little academic, but we are going to show many interesting points. So the control is YXTL. So that was studied by Rosier, who proved that um, you have the controllability in time t, if you want null controllability in time t, if and only if L does not belong to this set of critical lengths. It's called N. Very nice result. And then uh, he, he deduced from that the local controllability for the nonlinear system. Do you see this? Is, for the, the linear system, you forget uh, YYX. So he studies the linearized control system, proves the controllability in time t if only L does not belong to this, this set. And then he, de he deduced from that the null controllability of the original KDV control system. And there was another system which was studied uh, so, uh, by, uh, by other people, which is the, the system which is one. But you see the control now is not YXTL, the control is YT0. And then there is no critical length. This is a result due to Rosier. Whatever is the length of the channel, you get the null controllability in small time. And what I, I did with Eduardo Serpa, I construct a feedback such that you have this exponential decay rate, which is given by two. That is for any lambda, you can find a decay rate, which is exponential decay rate, which is at least equal to lambda by choosing a feedback U, which depends on lambda, of course. And we use this idea of backstepping. So you have this transformation Z, Y gives Z, and you want to transform the system two into the system three. For the system three, again, you get this exponential decay rate, which is given by four, just by multiplying the equation by Z and doing the integration by part using the boundary condition. And the equation on K is now given by one. Now, as you see, it's not really, it does not uh, have a, a known type. And you have this uh, equation on the triangle with the boundary condition. And then we prove the existence of K by using the same type of method as uh, in the heat equation by Christic and the co-authors. And Sheng Kuang Xuan succeeded to prove this uh, estimate on the kernel. And with this type of estimate, he succeeded to prove the null controllability in some way, which is similar to the one I present for the heat equation. And there is some interesting open problem. You see there is a square root of lambda, but this square root of lambda is not so natural. We expect to have um, lambda to the power one third. Now we try to return to the, to the original uh, KDV equation with uh, the, the control, which is the Neumann boundary condition at L. And we assume that the length is not critical. So we know that this system is controllable in this case locally, and you want to stabilize it quickly in, uh, with an exponential decay rate, which is at least equal to lambda. And we succeed to do that with uh, Lucci. In 2013, we construct a feedback. And the idea, and this is related to the previous question, question is now, if you try to, to use a Volterra transformation of the second kind, it doesn't seem to work. Uh, I think we proved, in fact, that it's not working, and if I remember well. And we have to, to use a, a more general transformation, which is given by one. You see, instead of making the integral from zero to x1, we make the integral from zero to l. And in some sense, if you do not ask any irregularity assumption on k, this transformation is a general transformation. It's a general transformation on, 
a linear transformation y gives z. Any linear transformation y gives z can be given by some kernel. This is the result due to Schwartz. And again, we want to transform the system two into system three. And we succeed to prove the existence of the, so the, the equation for k is given on this slide. And we prove the existence of k if and only if, in fact, the system, the length is not critical. So we prove the existence of k if and only if we have the, the, new, the controllability, in fact. So it's quite uh, natural. Uh, and, and the proof is, is a little different because you, I just briefly sketch the proof. So we have this uh, operator, the domain is de defined by one as operator A of pi is equal to minus f x, x minus pi x. It's a skewer joint operator. So you have the eigenvalue i mu j, and you can order this eigenvalue mu j. And then the idea is to try to find k in this form, which is given by, by um, one. So phi j is known, and you want to know what is psi j. And then you can prove that there exists a solution of this form. You can, and you prove the existence under the assumption that you have the null controllability, that is under the assumption that the length is not critical. And we prove also that this transformation is invertible, which is not of obvious because it's not a Volterra transformation of the second kind now. Now it's any linear, system, any linear transformation. So of course, a linear transformation may be not invertible. And so we succeed to do it. And we have a, a general result. Uh, in finite dimension, that that would be very interesting to have the analogous of this result for uh, PDE. You have y dot is equal to a y plus b u, and assume that the control is of dimension one to simplify the presentation. And you want to transform the system one into the system two. So you you say that uh, y is equal to t z, and u the control is equal to k z plus v. So you have two unknowns: a matrix t, t and the matrix k. And you prove that, in fact, if the system is controllable, and this is in fact equivalent, there is a unique solution for T and K, which allows you to transform the system one into the system two. The equation on K is given on the slide. That is, if the system is controllable, and this is if and only if, in fact, there is a unique K and a unique T, such that you have this property one and two, which is equivalent to the fact that the system in Y is transformed in the system in Z. So in some sense, it's answer to the question of uh, interior control, because you see, this is a quite general result in finite dimension, of course. But uh, that would be a very interesting to understand if this, this um, existence of T and K is also true for PDE. I don't know, maybe I don't have too much time. So I think maybe it's better if I stop here. There was this idea to move to, to one the hyperbolic equation, but I, I'm not sure that uh, I think my time is over. So maybe I, I can stop here and uh, try to answer to some question if there are questions. So, uh, uh, thank you, Professor Kuron, for such a wonderful talk. So, we have received more questions here. So, I'm just conveying to you. So, it's written that why is this set which does not include L, especially for not null controllability? Is it related to the spectrum of the operator? I think for the KDV equation, he has asked. Ah, yes, yes, this is very good. Yeah. Let's go back to, to this, yes. So for, uh, uh, yeah, it's related to, to something I, I'm going to explain you. Uh, where is it? Uh, so I, yeah. Okay, the linearized system, I didn't wrote it, but it's here. Okay, let's assume for example, that you see the first critical length, if you, if you take k equal one equal L, and then you get two pi. Yes. And then you consider the linearized system. That is, you forget y, y, x. You forget y, y, x. And you multiply the equation by y minus cosine of x. And you see that d over dt of y 
multiply by one minus cosine of x, integrate from zero to L, does not depend on the control. Whatever is the control, you cannot change the integral of the integral from zero to L of y of t and x, one minus cosine of x. It, it's going to not depend on, on, on the time. It's something which is conserved, whatever is the control. Whatever is the control, you cannot change this quantity. So this shows you that um, uh, this system, of course, is not controllable because, for example, if you start with a y, such that this integral, let's call it y0, this is the initial data, the integral from 0 to L, y0 times 1 minus cosine of x dx is not equal to 0, then you cannot reach 0 because this quantity is going to be conserved. It will be always different from 0. Of course, the situation is different for the nonlinear system. And in fact, I proved with a crepeau uh, in 2004 that the nonlinear system is indeed null controllable. It's in fact locally null controllable. It's locally uh, controllable. That is, the, the nonlinear term is helping you to get the controllability. Is helping you to get the controllability, and we prove that uh, uh, you have this uh, exact controllability for l equal to pi, whatever is the time. And then the, you see, for the next, uh, for example, if you take k equal two and l equal one, then it was proved that ser by Serpa and uh, also saw some results by Serpa and Crepeau for more general lengths. That, the null con that you get also the exact controllability, but if the time is large enough, if the time is large enough, they prove that you have the null controllability. And then I just proved with uh, recently with uh, Armand Koenig and who I mean and Guyet, because that in fact we need some time. So this is an example where you need some time, even if the speed of progression is infinite, you need some time. We just finished the paper today, but. We, we, we need some time in order to control it. Uh, this is due to the fact that uh, this uh, controllability result comes from the a quadratic term. And when there is a quadratic term, sometimes uh, you can move in some direction, <coughs> assume that the, the, the linear system is, is not controllable, then the non-linearity is going to show you that you can move maybe in some direction, but not the opposite. At least if the time is too small. And this is really what happened for the KDB equation. You have the controllability, let's take k equal to and l equal one. Then we prove with uh, Armand Koenig and Huaymin and Guyen that uh, we have this controllability, the, you need some time in order to have the new controllability. So this will be the same for the stabilization, of course. We need some time in order to stabilize the system. So I ask the participants, so if you have some more questions, please ask in the question answer box. Otherwise, I will ask two, three questions. So I got one question. Uh, So his question is that, are such results available for coupled hyperbolic parabolic systems? Um, in the context of, I think, backstripping, it is asked. Uh, uh, what I would say is that uh, what we can do, is, so we, we made, um, because after there was also some, some result with, uh, 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 I got some results with uh, uh, on the Schrodinger equation, uh, uh, and we see we see more and more new phenomena. That is, uh, we prove that, uh, and there was some. So I work on, on with this with Morgan Morancé and also uh, Guillaume Elive, Longu. We find more and more cases where you have this. Uh, uh, but it's still, it's always when the, the control is of finite dimension and the state, the, the domain is in, is uh, of dimension one. But with more and more general situation, and 
we succeed to prove this existence of, uh, of this kernel equation, of the existence of a solution to the kernel equation, which is not a Volterra transformation of the second kind, but it's a Volterra, it's a, a general Volterra transformation. We, so we show in many more and more cases, but of course it's not completely, uh, uh, and I, I work also to, with uh, Amori Ayat, Shenkyu Angxian, and uh, case of Zhang on, on this for, for um, uh, some hyperbolic equation. Uh, we show that you see what I, I show you for finite dimension case. We succeed to prove the existence of T and K for more and more general equation. But of course the situation is sometimes much more complicated because uh, but what we observe is that all in all applications that we, we have, the T is continuous. The K, the, the linear transformation T is continuous, but the K is not continuous. And there is something which is sometimes difficult to understand is what is BK. Uh, you have also to be careful what is, what's the meaning of TB equal to B because you have a boundary term. So it's not in the space usually. So you have to understand this. But what we observe, I, I think this is uh, maybe interesting. What we observe is that uh, T is often is continuous. But it's very challenging open problem. You, you see, there is a, a abstract framework about uh, the control of uh, infinite dimensional linear system, which is well established. We, we have the equivalence between controllability and observability. And one could try to prove in this framework that there is always, if the system is controllable, there is always this T and K, which is a solution of one and two. We have many examples, but still uh, the, the general result is not, uh, is not clear. Yeah. Uh, so another thing just a comment in this case so interior control case means like a bilinear control case this backstripping can be used uh, bilinear you have to be careful the, the, the backstepping is only working for a linear system uh, for non-linear system you could try to say okay i want to transform uh, a system into some other one as i should have mentioned for for the Schrodinger equation, I, I work also to, with Ludovic Gagnon. Uh, but for non-linear system, even in finite dimension, it's difficult to understand if you have two systems, is it possible to transform one into the other one? There, there are some results, of course, there are some results which are very fascinating. Uh, but even if you try to transform a non-linear system into a linear one, at least if you, 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 you also ask to, you are allowed to, to add uh, some dimension, uh, it's still an open problem, in fact. Uh, so the so nonlinear case, you see, in this situation, you see the nonlinearity is always a perturbation. We, we study the linear system, we stabilize the linear system, and, and after, in fact, we use the same feedback than for the linear system, and we prove that this, is, this linear feedback is working also for the non-linear system. It's not like uh, for, for this one, what I mentioned before. You know, remember for L equal to pi, the linear system is not controllable, but you can control it if you have the non-linear term. The non-linearity is going to help you. And we do also some, uh, some work uh, about the stabilization when the linear system is not controllable with uh, Ivan Rivas and uh, Shen Kuangxian. But there is an open problem in this case, trying to get, uh, we prove some exponential decay rate for some suitable feedback, but we are not able to prove that whatever is the decay rate, you can get this exponential decay rate. It's an open problem, which is also very interesting. You see, there are plenty 
of open problem in control theory. Yes, we, we know very little and uh, it's why it's very fascinating subject because uh, of course we have some results, but uh, the field of open question of open problem is uh, huge. Yeah, there is one question which is in the chat, not here. So in the WhatsApp ask that you mentioned something that null controllability and again, the same type of question and the finite time stabilization if the system is linear, for linear system, uh, if from uh, having null controllability, will it imply again the finite time stabilization? This is the first one. And the next one is if the nonlinearity is globally Lipschitz. In that case also, will it be true? No, no. In fact, even the local result is false. If you consider just this system, x1 dot is equal to u1, x2 dot is equal to u2, and x3 dot is equal to x1 u2 minus x2 u1. So this system is controllable, it's null controllable in large globally in small time. And uh, so you can move from any point to any other point in small time, in fact. And you cannot stabilize it by your u of x. It's not possible to, to stabilize it by your u of x, even in asymptotically. Uh, not finite time, but for this system, you can make it for you with a u of t and x. If you you uh, control which depends on t and x, then it's possible, and you can make it in finite time also. Okay. Okay. So but you see, for the heat equation, what is very challenging is uh, that for the line, line, linear heat equation in 1D. Uh, it's not clear if it's possible to stabilize it in finite time with a feedback which does not depend on time. What we produce is a feedback which depends on time, which allows you to get the stabilization in finite time. And the open problem is, can we make it with a U which with a control which does not depend on time, which depends only on Y, not T. In finite dimension, this is related to the question, in finite dimension, if you have y dot equal a y plus b u, if the system is controllable, which is the, the case for the heat equation, then you can show that you can stabilize it in finite time with a u of y. Can you do? Can you make it also for the heat equation? This is an interesting open problem. And uh, so there are other two questions. Means whatever I, I am going to ask. So. Uh, one is the null controllability with a feedback control. So just a feedback control, now getting the null controllability, does there exist an equivalent kind of criteria for that? Yes. Uh, Suppose- Yeah, yeah you, you see the, the, uh, the null controllability, even in finite dimension, we can stay in finite dimension. The, the controllability has very, has been very much studied. In fact, even using Lie brackets, using iterated Lie brackets, we have many necessary and sufficient, and there are necessary conditions, there are sufficient conditions for the, what is called the small time local controllability, which is the something which is very local. That is everything is small, the time is small, the control is small, the state is small. So something which is, which sounds to be tractable. But we do not know a necessary and sufficient condition for small time local controllability. We have necessary condition, we have sufficient condition, but they do not match, even for finite dimensional control system. Of course, this is not the case for linear system, but for non-linear system, it's still an open problem to understand under which condition you have a small time local controllability. We have necessary condition, we have sufficient condition, they do not match. They are very powerful in some sense. They are very little nonlinear system on which we cannot conclude. But still, we do not have the, the necessary and sufficient condition. But for stabilization, it's even worse because for stabilization, it's something which is more recent. Stabilization, uh, especially for PD, in fact, for people have very much studied the, the controllability but much less is known about the stabilization, even in finite dimension, because uh, 
it was not uh, so much studied, it's not uh, as a controllability. More people uh, have studied the controllability, uh, but very, uh, there are less works at least, there are less work about stabilization, which is, I think, a very important subject, in fact, uh, stabilization. Of course, controllability is also important, but stabilization, you always want to have uh, something which is robust to perturbation. So robust to perturbation is a stabilization issue. And right. this is not so well studied, especially for PD. For PD, the situation is even worse because I would say that maybe 90% of the papers are about controllability compared to 10% which are about stabilization. But the, my point was that regarding that, if a system is linear, and if you have you know the system is null controllable, so in that case, can you have some kind of equivalent criteria to get no. feedback control using feedback control getting the null controllability? No, this is very important subject. So what I show is some examples. Some examples: the heat equation, KDV equation. You can also do some hyperbolic equation where you can recover the null controllability using feedback. Okay. So we do not know criteria. Uh, the, the, we do not know criteria, no. Even for a linear system. And uh, as it was mentioned by earlier by some other question, uh, the case of uh, higher dimension is very challenging. It's very widely open. Uh, and another is thing that uh, if the dimension is one, we do not have the full picture, but we we are not far from the full picture for linear system. Yeah. For linear system. And uh, the another thing is that when you uh, show something in a slide, can you just one, open one slide that when you are explaining backstripping, so you have a target. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can show you the, the first, yes. Uh, no, there is a target yes, system and here, you have yes. a, put a control on the target system also. GT. Ah, now this, uh, 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 you, you, want, you want to study the, the target? Uh, yeah, sorry, because I, I thought it was in finite dimension. Yeah. Let me show. Uh, yes, it's, it's, uh, it's here. Uh, maybe it's not so clear here because I didn't. Yes, you have a, the V is related to the U and the Y, in fact. You have to, to compute because I think this is on the next, on the next slide. So you. There is a sole transformation of the control. There is the transformation on, uh, on Y. So this is Y gives Z or Z gives Y. This is the same because this is invertible. But you see the, the, the transform, the feedback law, you see now it depends on K. To take V equals zero if you want. Yes, this is two equal K Z plus V. There is also the K, the capital K. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the capital K, you see, so it's that G equation one and the equation one, because you, uh, you you take you see you take x one here the, the the control is on the on x equal one so you take x one uh, z you take x one equal one so you get z of one which is v is equal to y of x one which is u minus the integral from zero to one of k one x2, y, x2. So this is a transformation about V. You have V is equal to U minus integral from zero to one of K, x1, K, x1, x1 is one, x2, y, x2. This is the transformation, maybe it's more clear. It's clearer on the infinite dimension. Yes, you see, uh, sorry. You have the transformation y equal tz, but you have also the transformation u equal kz plus v. So the unknown, I didn't show it too much about the PDE because for the PDE, the most important part is t, but you have also the transformation on the control. You have this k, which is part of the unknown. The unknown is t and k. Hello. Hello, we are here. Yes, uh, so I mean, my internet has some connection. 
Ah, okay. For, for, uh, I, yeah, you are able to hear? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Do you hear me? Hello. 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 Uh, yes, it seems that your, your picture yeah. is frozen. frozen uh, so oh. do, you, do you hear me? Yes, I am able to hear. So maybe the uh, internet has some connection problems. So I just ask uh, two questions in your slide and I... Uh, so the one thing is that when you have a, you show me the system with a feedback control, K of that. So in that system is uh, for the heat equation itself, if you put a feedback control and assume the null controllability, yeah. means uh, the, uh, so you, you, do you know anything about the kind of backward uniqueness of that system? Because for null controllability, we know for the heat equation, we know backward uniqueness. But if you put a closed loop system with a K, Ah yes, that... very interesting. Yes, um, it's very interesting question. I I, I see the, the point. Yes, yes. You, 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 but there is a feedback. The problem is the feedback. Of course, the feedback is not. Maybe I can. Uh... That's a very good question. Yes. Let me try to go back to to here. You you see, the file that the the use that you construct there is a time by feedback. T Y gives. Yes. The y is not smooth, so there is no. Of course, you, you are right. There is no backward uniqueness because all the solutions are going to zero in time capital T. So you start from any initial data and you arrive to zero. And this is a very good question because we do not know what will be the best uh, uh, the regularity of you. What something what would be? What can we do with the u? Of course, it's not a contradiction with uh, the backward uniqueness because there is a U. The U is not smooth and it's very different from what you, what you expect. It's non-linear. So, but you are right, the backward uniqueness for the closed loop system does not hold. The backward uniqueness does not hold because all the trajectories are going to zero in time t. You start at time zero for any initial data and you arrive at zero at time capital T. So you do not have the backward uniqueness. But this is like um, x dot is equal to minus x to the power one third. You, you have the forward uniqueness, but you do not have the backward uniqueness. Because if you fix some initial data, let's say, which is less than one, absolute value is less than one, then for some time, maybe which is one again, I don't remember, uh, you will get that all the state is, a, is at zero. So you do not have the backward uniqueness, but you have the forward uniqueness. In fact, I didn't show that, but uh, when I uh, I show you the, the picture, I saw the, the about uh, stable and attractor, I, I explained that starting from some initial data, I may have many solutions, but you can prove that if you can stabilize uh, atomically, for example, but it's the same for finite time stabilization, by a U, which is um, by a U, which is let's say only C zero, you can make it also by a U, which is C infinity outside the origin. So then you have forward uniqueness, you have forward uniqueness, because if you start from zero, because of the stability, you have to remain at zero. Yeah. Uh, and prediction with the backward, uh, the nice result of backward uniqueness for the heat equation, because there is a U, there is a U, the control, the feedback. Another thing, uh, uh, so in this case, the control, whatever you get, this uh, time varying feedback, so is the regularity, what kind of regularity it will be? How regular it will uh, be? It's continuous. It, at, at least, uh, I should say that uh, it, uh, the, the regularity, which is important, is uh, the regularity with respect to state. And with respect to state, it's continuous. So there is some... Uh, with respect to time, the, the, the regularity is not important. It's discontinuous with respect to time at some special, precise time, but it doesn't matter. The key issue is the regularity with respect to y. Of course, you cannot expect to have something which is smooth with respect to y, let's say c1, because uh, you, you have the, then you will have the backward uniqueness, which will be a contradiction. So the so u is not, uh, I, but we, we start to study that with, uh, 
the same to accent. It seems that the U is not even Algerian. It's uh, uh, like <coughs> it behaves like when you are close to the origin, it's the norm of U of T and Y is, is less than. Uh, 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 no, we have this property. It's uh, sorry. It's um, it's the size is less than. Well, we have this property which is given by before. We have this bound. But you, if you want to study, you start from the initial data and you want to study the evolution. Of course, it's going to to converge to zero. But uh, the estimates uh, uh, it will converge to zero in finite time. But the transition is not always very good. It's continuous, but uh, not the Dorian, the transition. Okay. And uh, this is the last question corresponding to your slide when you explain the backstripping. So for the ODE format, you show something with Y1 and Y2. So can ah, yes, you yes, 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 yes. Okay, very good. It's here, yes. Uh, just uh, this one. So yes. in this slide, so essentially, suppose if f is nonlinear, so you are doing first y2, you are treating as a control and you are stabilizing exactly. y1. And then exactly. you are plugging this one and considering some Lyapunov functional, you are going to show that total yes. system will be stabilizable. But yes. this, what I am asking, this kind of a cascade kind of phenomena is happening. So is it a, the product, is that your work related to sometimes in power series expansion, so you, you you can you do something like that that treating the first comp, uh, treating the y2 as a control for y1 and then can you do this kind of two step method to get a controllability of the whole system means suppose ah. you have uh, you, you see first uh, <clears throat> yeah it's an interesting question also uh, there is many interesting uh, question related to that problem um, First, you see the result is when you, you have a feedback, which is C1 for the system two, then you can stabilize the system one by your feedback, which is only C0. So if you want to, to keep forward, because sometimes you, you want to, to keep going, you, you, again, maybe the control, you, you have something which has a triangular form and you can iterate the construction, but you have to start with something which is very regular, which is very regular because at each step, you lose one uh, derivative. So there are many questions now which are related to this. First, there is some interesting cases where you see the system two, you cannot stabilize it with the Y2, which depends on Y1, but you can stabilize the system one. And then th this is very interesting for application because system one, let's assume that uh, the, the, the true system is system two, you could say, okay, I am not going to, I cannot make it for this system, but I am going to consider the system one. And for the system one, I can make it. And then you can apply, you can really uh, apply the U2 to the system. The U2 is going to depend on Y1, Y2. So you, you see, and then there is also the, the converse is not clear, also for controllability. That is, you have many others that, that the system two, you, you have connection between the controllability on system one and system two. But there are counterexamples. That is, you have system, it may happen that the system two is small time locally controllable, but the system one is not small time locally controllable. Um, uh, there are counterexamples for that. So there are connections between one and two. But the connection is not working always. You, you have to be careful. And, for example, in the case I, I present, you see, so the construction of U that I gave here, you see there is Y2 bar prime. And if you try to do the, this for this Y2 bar, which is not C1, it's not working that way. You have to change the V. The V is not given by one. The V is given by three, which is here. And so you, but, uh, there are counterexamples about the fact that uh, maybe you can stabilize the system two, but you cannot the system one. 
there are counterexample for that. And also the converse is not true again. Uh, there are connections between one and two, but you have to be careful. And, and this is also used in the infinite dimension case also, yeah. this, yeah. this study. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, this study is very much studies in infinite dimension because uh, yes, it's very useful because there are many systems where you do not implement. In fact, you, you, you iterate the method. You iterate the method many times. Sometimes you, you have a system of dimension six. You control is dimension one. You can reduce. You do the, this iteration and you arrive to a system which is uh, just the state is of dimension one. And then you can iterate and you get the feedback. No, it's a very powerful method. Yes, very interesting. Yeah. So, okay, so this is very powerful and this it's very used in, in finite dimension for finite dimension control system. For PD, of course, it's not so used. It's used, in fact, for regularity issues, for regularity issues, but uh, technically, of course, it's not so interesting for PD because if the control is of dimension of infinite dimension, is everything is of an infinite dimension, then the system two is also, also of infinite dimension. So, uh, but it's used also for PD, but not so, not so much. Yes. It's used, in fact, for regularity issue. So it's more technical. That is, you see, when you have Y2 dot is equal to U2, in some sense, you can get more regularity. You can get more regularity on Y2. It's interesting for PD in this, in this setting, that is your, you can get more regularity. Okay. So thank you very much, Professor no, no. Puron, to making this session successful. Thank you very much. It was thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. So I hope to see you in the future. May you like. We hope to get your participation in future talk as well. Proshenjit, it's over to you now. Okay. See you later. Bye. Proshenjit. Okay. Bye. I think uh, he has... Hello. Yes. Yeah. So I just, I'll just make a small announcement, important announcement for the next talk. Our next speaker, uh, is from USA, Professor Gunther Ullman. So our next talk, uh, next Tuesday's talk is scheduled at 6.30 p.m. Indian time. Hello? Internet is bad. Yes, we are able to hear. Okay, bye. Thank you. Hello? Hello. Uh, I think he has just left, left the meeting just now. Hello, Prasenjit. So, uh, an important announcement from, can you hear me, Shishandu? Yes, yes, I'm able to hear. And uh, the announcement yeah. regarding the next yeah, meeting, so we are able to hear. Yeah, can you hear my announcement? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So on next Tuesday's talk is from six thirty p.m. Indian time. Please notice this. Thank you, and I'll close the session now. There is a question or such as well. So our next okay, lecture sir. is on next Tuesday. Next Tuesday from six thirty p.m. Indian time in a different time zone. Uh, we generally our lectures are from three p.m. Indian time, but next lecture is from six thirty p.m. Oh, Baba, the internet is here,